Well, the trade war seems to have made the world more unstable, and tonight we're looking at the implications for South Africa of this and another recent development. U.S. President Donald Trump rejected a deal previously signed with Iran, and he's enforced economic sanctions on that nation. The acting U.S. Defense Secretary Patrick Shanahan reportedly, uh, reportedly tabled plans to send 120,000 U.S. troops to the Middle East as tensions soar between those two nations to discuss that and the trade wars. We're joined by Professor of International Relations at WITS, uh, John Schremler. Thank you for being with us, Good evening. Prof. Good evening. The, the big question, could there be war in the Middle East? Well, there could be more instability, more unpredictability. This causes concern for all countries, but including South Africa. On the two issues of trade and of the Middle East and Iran, South Africa has always taken a very consistent position about the importance of multilateralism, and it does have lots of friends internationally beyond the United States. But let me start with the trade thing first and start to say, look, there's a short-term sure. risk for South Africa if this continues to escalate. Trump may be sounding reassuring, but we don't know whether he's ignorant of trade. We don't know whether he's impulsive with trade. We don't know whether he's incompetent in his negotiations because he treats tariffs as though they're hurting China and not the American consumer, and that's causing some internal problems. But the end yeah. result for can, South can Africa... Can clarify that? Because I think it's something that people hear, who, who does it hurt? Tariffs. So tariffs are an additional um, cost, an additional tax. And they're a regressive tax. So, Everybody has to pay them for the goods increasing in price. Yeah, so you import a, a TV from China, you're going to pay a little bit more because right. the Chinese manufacturer has to pay right. that more to get it in. However, surely it does help U.S. manufacturers because suddenly their televisions become more attractive so the Chinese manufacturers not really may not really and the and the industry is getting very very nervous about this because it's very unstable it raises the prices it could impact on South Africa to come back to the South African concern if the Chinese economy starts to wobble and slow down then they will have less demand for primary commodities which we uh, export to, to, to China in a big way, and it's very important for our economy. But there's a knock-on effect. If the U.S. consumers, the U.S. economy has been booming, but if it starts to falter because there's a lot of debt and there's a lot of in, internal problems with that economy, then the demand for automobiles goes down. And so all those Mercedes and BMWs that South Africa exports to Germany and that go on to the United States mm -hmm. would be at risk. That's the short-term problem. The longer-term problem is the problems that, that Sharon was alluding to with the World Trade Organization. China has a lot of problems uh, with the other countries on how it characterizes itself. Rob Davies points to the fact that China is no longer a developing country. <coughs> it expects special privileges. You've got to deal with those questions, but you deal with it in a deliberative, careful, and considered way. That's the midterm yeah. is to get that. But then also, I think rightly so, uh, the Minister of, of Trade and Industries, Rob Davies, points out that down the road there is looming a big conflict between China and the United States over robotics and over intellectual property and over the fourth industrial revolution, artificial intelligence. South Africa needs to have a competitive relationship between China and the U.S. managed within rules so that then South Africa can pick which product it wants. Mm. It shouldn't have one hegemon, whether it's the United States or whether it's China. Should we play them off against each other? Well, you, you know, China I mean, it, I, and, I don't and the U.S. are big. Don't know if we have the clout well, to even but, you know, China, start, you know, you know. But, but South Africa has enormous goodwill around the world. It's a member of the G20. It's a, now a, a, a non-permanent member of the Security Council, yet again. It has uh, relationships with the BRICS. It has relationships with a lot of different countries. So therefore, it can work to build coalitions of the willing to try to moderate this rivalry. But you can't do that with Donald Trump mm -hmm. in the White House. Now, Xi Jinping, the president of China, is a president for life, so he'll be there for a while. Thank heaven Cyril Ramaphosa has another five years, but Donald Trump, you know, is under enormous domestic pressures. He's got an election coming up in 2020. He could be impeached in the short term. How do countries deal with the United States when it's such an unpredictable, yeah, erratic, really impulsive, and tweeting president? Can, can you answer the fundamental questions for our viewers who may be lay people when it comes to economics? Is Donald Trump right or wrong? Because the, China does have this advantage. It's, it's gained tech uh, knowledge. It, it exports to the world. And we know the, those steel imports that Sherwin was talking about 
Oslo Metal said it, it wiped us out because they have cheap labor and they're selling their steel much cheaper than any South African company could do. Barack Obama took these problems very seriously and what he did was put together a regional coalition called the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Donald Trump comes in and impulsively kills that off and so he's doing it mano a mano, one on one, which is yeah. not the way you negotiate. Barack Obama negotiated a nuclear non-proliferation deal with the Iranians that all of the other partners, Europe and, 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 uh, and China and, and Russia say, Iran, Iran has been abiding by. Iran, like China, poses problems in different regions for different actors. But you don't do it with tweets and impulsive actions and betray your fundamental ignorance or your incompetence about the mm. sophisticated problems and interactions that involved in either the Middle East conflicts or trade conflicts. And at last, Donald Trump betrayed in this trade thing that he doesn't understand that there's a tax involved here. And now he's scrambling around to compensate uh, farmers who are in his base and are unhappy. And rest assured, China knows exactly what it's doing. So it's going to target its, its, um, its, its, its tariffs for those constituencies in Trump's base. Mm. Let's continue talking about Iran, but let's hear on this very issue what a U.S. Senator Warner had to say. I am concerned, very concerned, that the administration has not developed a co coherent approach to counter China. I worry, for example, in its current trade negotiations, and I give tr credit to the administration for sounding the alarm in terms of saying the status quo is not acceptable. But I fear the president, in his insatiable effort to declare a victory, even sometimes when there may not be a victory in hand, that we may end up with a trade deal that sells $100 billion worth of soybeans, but leaves off the questions around intellectual property, around joint ventures, and around where the game is really moving in terms of 5G, AI, quantum, etc. So I guess saying what you're saying is that it needs to be addressed, but not in the way Trump is addressing well, things. Senator Warner, Senator Warner is a Democrat, and the Democrats are extremely critical of Donald Trump. What we want to see is the Republicans starting to break ranks. And already, because of this trade issue and because of the constituencies that are affected, the Republicans are starting to show that they are getting impatient with Donald Trump's behavior on this. That leads me to think, at least in the short term, that maybe he will somehow pull out a deal and then mm. pretend it's a great success. And the Chinese are probably smart enough to let uh, this pass because Donald Trump is not there forever. But um, so far, the Republicans have stood by him firmly, and his Republican base likes the fact that he's hard on immigrants, he's hard on, on, on trade, and he presents these in very simplistic terms that appeal to uninformed voters, in my view, who are busy about their lives and not paying attention to mm. the complex policies involved. All right, let's move to Iran if we can. Sure. Uh, again, there was a deal in place and, and the U.S. president rejected that previous deal whereby Iran's nuclear ambitions would be held in check by the world, I guess. Remind us why that happened and why he distrusts Iran so much, why we're here. Donald Trump didn't dis, dis, distrust Iran so much as he disliked Barack Obama. He ran a racist campaign, remember, about Obama. And the first thing he did was to kill off that Pacific Association Agreement that Obama did and then kill off the Iran deal, which Obama did. Now, unfortunately, uh, uh, because it is dangerous, Trump is surrounded by some very hardliners. John Bolton, the national security advisor, has wanted to go to war with Iran. He said that publicly. He was a hawk on the Iraq intervention. And Pompeo, his secretary of state, is also a hardliner. Tr uh, Trump came to power saying he didn't want to get involved in more, more Middle East conflicts. And I believed him on that because there's no percentage for him with his constituency. He wanted to build mm -hmm. a wall and, 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 and smite the Chinese at the tariff negotiations that he seemed to treat like a New York real estate magnet. I mean, he's never been in government, so he didn't know really what he was doing. Now, however, he is deploying forces into the region. He's escalating the conflict. Iran is not going to be pushed around on this one. And what South Africa and other countries that want to see non-proliferation are doing are saying, wait a minute, 
this agreement has been respected. And today you had the deputy cha uh, chair of, of, of the uh, Central Command, a British general, saying in the Pentagon he disagreed with Donald Trump's policy. Can you imagine that yeah. the allies are now breaking ranks with Donald Trump? So he is isolated, and, and, and yet he's rattling the cage in a way that makes me very nervous. So let's go back to my first question there. Could there be a war? Of course. Of course, there could be a trade war and there could be a, uh, a hot war. Trump has said repeatedly and did so in the last 24 hours that he's um, confident that there won't be a war with, with, with Iran and he's confident that they'll get a trade deal. But can you believe him? Can you believe him at all when he lies 10,000 times in his first yeah. 800 days in office? And, and could it pull in, I mean, a whole host of, of countries like China, Iran's allies? Um, and, and what will that mean for South Africa? Well, South Africa, alas, I'm going to repeat myself here, at least has friends everywhere. It has not been active on the world stage, and Cyril Ramaphosa in his SONA made clear that domestic priorities must prevail. However, he's got a very talented foreign minister, and he's got a very talented Durko, and I think people are working the midnight oil uh, up in Pretoria trying to figure out how to position themselves and who's a friend and who's not. But one thing you cannot take for granted is that the United States is going to be predictable as it was whether you liked it or not. It had a fairly consistent Africa policy and since the end of the Cold War it's been fairly benign except for this intervention in Iraq mm. and, and, and the Libya concern. But those are fairly isolated. This is big stuff right now and, and it affects South Africa directly, that is to trade and if there was an escalating war in the Middle East, that would too. And South Africa has good relations with Iran. All right. So concerning for everyone. Thank you for that update. And we'll watch the international news for you. That was Professor of International Relations at the University of Witts, Professor John Stremler.